And welcome to my Diamond Book Award studio here at KTHB. My name is Craig O'Neill. I do the news on television station KTHB in Little Rock, but I also love to read the Diamond Book Award nominees. And oh, do we have a good one for you today. It is called a computer called Catherine. Hmm, what could this be about? I think it's going to be about something that may inspire you. It's how Katherine Johnson helped put America on the moon by Suzanne Slade. And we want to thank Little Brown Books for Young Readers for giving us this opportunity to read a Diamond Book Award nominee. Let's join the story together. Everywhere she went, Katherine counted. She counted her steps to church. She counted the plates on the dinner table. She even tried counting the stars in the sky. <laughs> Most important of all, Catherine counted the days until she could start school. Finally, at age five, she followed her brother, hundreds of steps, to the two-room schoolhouse. An excellent student, Catherine devoured thick books and added numbers at the speed of light. So the teacher decided she would skip first grade and start in second grade. But Catherine was such a fast learner, she later skipped fifth grade too. And before you could say, mathematician, magician, she was a grade ahead of her older brother. What? Catherine loved math because it was easy to see if an answer was right or wrong. Meanwhile, most everyone in town was arguing about right and wrong. Some people said it was wrong for children with different skin colors to attend the same school. Others said it wasn't right for women to work at the same jobs as men. Their arguments seemed wrong to Catherine, as wrong as five plus five equals 12. She believed everyone should be treated the same. So she kept working hard in school and dreamed of a future when all people would have equal rights. Catherine finished eighth grade when she was only 10 years old, but her town didn't have a high school for black students. Determined to keep learning, she counted the dusty miles, 120 in all, as her family moved closer to a school she could attend. And there she took an exciting math class called geometry. She learned how points and lines made shapes triangles, trapezoids, and perfect parallelograms. And her love for math grew exponentially. Let's all say that together, shall we? I'll count three, let's say it. One, two, three. Exponentially. I love it. At 15, Kath yes, 15, Catherine started college. She flew through every math class at West Virginia State, so a professor taught harder classes just for her. In advanced geometry, she plotted points on a graph. When she connected the points, they created a beautiful U-shaped curve called a parabola. It was love at first sight. After graduation, Catherine became a math teacher. Back then, people said women could only be teachers or nurses. Catherine knew that was wrong as wrong as 10 minus five equals three. Uh-uh. She believed women could be anything, scientists, lawyers, or mathematicians. So she set out to prove it. Catherine discovered a research center in Virginia that was hiring women mathematicians. They were called computers because they made calculations that helped the men engineers design airplanes and flight plans. To Catherine, it added up to the perfect job. All day long, she punched buttons on a calculator, just like the other women. She solved long math equations, just like the other women. She wrote answers on a huge data sheet, just like the other women. But Catherine, wasn't like the other women. She asked questions, lots of questions. What were her calculations used for? Why were they important? How did her answers help design airplanes and flights? 
The men engineers noticed the woman who asked intelligent questions and how quickly she solved difficult math problems. So they asked Catherine to join their space team. Its mission? Send America's first astronaut into space. Catherine said yes. And then she discovered that women were not allowed to attend the group's meetings. She knew this was wrong, as wrong as five times five equals 20. So she asked if she could go. The engineers replied, uh, women don't ever go to those. And Catherine asked, is there a law against it? And the men said, no. So Catherine showed up the next meeting ready to work. Astounded by her geometry skills, the team asked her to calculate when America's first space flight should blast off. Catherine agreed. But first, she asked questions like, where should the rocket splash down? How high should it fly? When should it land? With that information, Catherine carefully computed the rocket's flight path, a beautiful U-shaped curve. Next, she worked backward to figure out the time it should blast off. And then she began counting the days until launch. On May 5th, 1961, Alan Shepard blasted off. Following Catherine's flight path, he soared into the silvery sky. 15 minutes later, he splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean right on schedule and right on target. Soon, America began dreaming of a longer flight around the entire Earth. To figure out the math for this long, complicated trip, engineers decided to use their new room-sized computer that worked much faster than people. But astronaut John Glenn trusted Catherine more than a machine. He wouldn't step one foot into that rocket until she said the computer's calculations were correct. Happy to help, Catherine checked every number. On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth. Then people began wondering if an astronaut could travel all the way to the moon. But the Soviet Union and the United States wanted to be the first to land there and win the space race. Catherine knew this flight was incredibly long and dangerous. Every calculation would have to be perfect. One math mistake, and that rocket would zoom right past the moon. As NASA's computer hummed and computed a flight path to the moon and back, Catherine went to work too, double-checking the machine's calculations. But this was the most complicated geometry problem she'd ever seen. One of the points, the spacecraft, was flying incredibly fast. Her target, the moon, was constantly circling Earth while spinning. Some people thought the problem was too difficult to solve. But Catherine knew that was wrong, as wrong as 25 divided by 5 equals 4. She calculated and computed. She plotted and planned. She created a bold, brave path all the way to the moon and back. 10, 9, ignition, sequence starts. Heart racing. Catherine leaned close to the small television screen. Seven, six, five. She held her breath as powerful flames exploded on the launch pad. Four, three, two, one. Lift off. The rumbling rocket slowly rose above the ground, above the smoke, above the clouds, and then disappeared into ink black space. Four days later, as Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon, Catherine smiled and began to count. The end, but not quite the end because in the back of the book, there are some pictures. If you get a chance to ever check this out of the library, there is the real Catherine Johnson, some of her calculations and congratulations. What a story. And it's all true. And this is true too. We're voting on the Diamond Book Awards.
listen to or read at least three of the 10 nominees and then vote coming up in May. We'll see who wins the 2022 Diamond Book Award. Thanks for watching. We'll have more on this Diamond Book channel.